Hello, everyone. Welcome to Everything Arsenal. We have some great news and we have some transfer news as well. But first, let's start with the breaking news in terms of injury. Gabriel Jesus. So yesterday we had that Gabriel Jesus was back in training. Like, like I'm so happy with this one. Like the impact that Zinchenko and Jesus both had last season, I feel like we really need them in the team. Like, for example, the reason why we are forced to, or not, not forced, like the reason why I say it's playing party at track back, for example, is because Pretty much Zinchenko is not fit on the left side. I don't think we'd have two inverted fullbacks, but if Zinchenko is fully fit, that means party back in midfield. And Gabriel Jesus as well. Um, Nketi has done well so far. Um, I'm presuming Antrosad would do uh, well, uh, well as well if he played up front. Um, the game that Harvard's played up front against Man City thought he did well, but the kind of um, game that Jesus plays, I think it gives us a whole other dimension in terms of link up play with the other players, in terms of... Um, uh, last season he scored 11 goals. People are like, yeah, he doesn't really score goals. He missed four months. If he didn't miss four months, I'm pretty sure he'd have had like something like 18 goals or something. Like if he didn't miss those four months. On top of that, he also gets assists. So I don't think he goes more than two games without getting a goal, a goal or an assist. So he always contributes. His combination played Martinelli with Odegaard, with Saka, I think it's incredible. And also his ability to come back into midfield and collect the ball, um, tussle with the midfielders, defensive midfielders, and the defenders, energy-wise, get himself into great positions. For example, last season against Bournemouth, he didn't score, but he won 3 0 and he did a lot. Like he pretty much contributed for the first two goals. The first one, he's run through midfield. He gave the pass to Martinelli. Martinelli shot, it rebounded to Odegaard. Odegaard scored. The second goal where Odegaard scored, it was Jesus running and making a good run in midfield, uh, in, in the box and confusing the defenders and leaving space for Odegaard. So Jesus gives us a lot. So, what's the latest on him? Well, he could be back as soon as this weekend. We thought he's just going to back, be back in training and maybe appear on the bench against my United next week and then probably be ready to start after the international break. But it seems like he could be ready to start by tomorrow. According to reports from um, Atita's uh, press conference from the man himself, he was asked um, the latest on Jesus' return. And he said it was a big blow for him after the preseason he had to have another surgery. He's looking really sharp. He trained the full uh, full week really good. So he trained actually from... Monday, it seems like we only got the pictures like um, Wednesday, Thursday, but it seems like he was training from Monday, which is very good news. And he says he's ready to go. Jesus is ready to go, not to go away from Arsenal, no, to go like to play. Um, in the squad, he was asked, is he in the squad for Fulham? He said, yes, he's ready to go. And he was asked, well, will Gabriel Jesus start? He said, let's see. Like that is such amazing news, absolutely amazing news. Like, uh, I mean, it could be bad news for some people, not in terms of Jesus returning, but in terms of with Jesus coming back, I don't necessarily think you're going to sign a striker. So for you guys who want us to sign a striker, I don't think we now with Jesus back, with Havertz who can play there, with Trossard who can play there, with Martinelli who can play there, with Nketiah who can play there, I don't think you're going to be getting um, a striker. So Jesus is back though. Personally, would I start him this weekend? Um, probably not. Would I even bring him off the bench? It depends. Um, I mean, they did tell us that it was a small procedure, so it definitely looks like it was a small procedure because he's come back very quickly. He's only missed two Premier League games, which is great for us. He also missed the Community Shield, so in total, three games he's missed. So that, that is actually better than what you expected. We thought he was going to be missing, like, maybe maybe two months or something. So that is actually a very sweet return, and I'm absolutely buzzing. Um, the reason why, if he wants to play him against my United, he might feel like, hey, we need to give him some few minutes against Fulham because these days, or at least for now, we don't have any midweek games until we come back to the, uh, like the Champions League starts and the Carabao Cup starts. Um, Chelsea are playing in the Carabao Cup second round next week. I mean, because they didn't finish in a European position. They won't tell you that, by the way. They are kind of ashamed. But hey, if they had given us that fixture, if he had that fixture, maybe they'd have given Jesus... Um, some few minutes in the car book up if he had a fixture this week but now it's direct premier league games for the next few weeks until after the international break when we will be back in the champions league i cannot wait for the draw as well that will be next week thursday um so it depends if he feels like he needs to start next week or he's ready to start next week he could give him a few minutes against fulham but the way fulham have been playing against everton played so far against everton and brentford they gave away a lot of chances they made a few mistakes against brentford as well and against everton I think you're going to get chances that Jesus is there or not. I think whoever starts there is going to score. There's Strasser, the Harvard, Song, Ket. I think you're going to get a few goals in this game. I think I predicted 4-0. I think I predicted 4-0. I think you can get as many goals. So 
Uh, one player I really want to score in this game is Guy Havertz. Um, even Trost said if he starts, um, whoever, both of them, I really want them to get in the, on the score sheet, but mainly Havertz for obvious reasons. I just um, want him to open his Arsenal account. But Jesus is back. I don't know how Nketi would feel about that, how Havertz would feel about that, how it will affect their game time. But the main man himself is back. Last one, he did incred incredible for us, so we definitely needed him back. Now that he's back, um, that means um, Balagan is definitely gone. Also, latest on him, he was gone either way, whether Jesus was injured or not. Also, latest on Balagan, according to David Onstein yesterday, he said as Monaco close to reaching agreement with Arsenal um, to sign striker following Balagan. Um, club still negotiating final prize, but 23 year old USA international is now on course to join Monaco from Arsenal in um permanent in a, in a permanent deal that is according to the athletics so um this is what they wrote as well arsenal are close to reaching a full agreement with monaco over the departure of following balagan in a deal that could represent a record sale for the premier league club i've basically never sold anyone for this much money apart from iwobi and um and alex ugly chamberlain like we've never really sold players for a lot of money like compared to Tottenham have been able to sell Bale and Chelsea have been able to sell Hazard and Liverpool have been able to sell Coutinho. He never really been able to sell these uh, players for a lot of money. But this time around, it seems like we will be but uh, around 40 million. Monaco have been leading the race for Balagan in recent weeks and the two teams are now in the process of negotiating the, the last details on a transfer for the 22-year-old Ford. The total price has yet to be finalised but it has been reported in France that Monaco are ready to pay around 39 million pounds for the USA international. Arsenal's current record sale is 35 million they received from Liverpool for Chamberlain. Um, so, yeah, um, that is according to the Telegraph, the, the one I just read for you. So, uh, Balagan is definitely leaving. I wanted to get around 45 million. So, let's see if you're actually going to, um, if you're going to increase that at, um, in any. Um, even if it's one million at least, get to 40 million um, pounds. And um, David Johnson said, subject to deal being finalized between clubs, following Balagan will undergo medical and join AS Monaco from Arsenal on a five year contract. First report on agreement being closed for 22 year old by um, Sky Sports set earlier. So Balagan is definitely leaving. Had the Jesus is back and Kate has been scoring and assisting. I don't think Balagan will stay, unfortunately. Uh, maybe it's a good thing that he isn't going to Chelsea or Tottenham. Um, wish him all the best in um, France. If you can get that 40 million, I guess we'll take. Um, also, according to Fabrice Hawkins, um, agreement reached between AS Monaco and Arsenal for the transfer following Balagan. It's a 45 million um, euro deal exclusive by him. Obviously, selling him wouldn't have been the best, um, the first option. Like if you're to ask me, keep Balagan, sell Balagan, loan Balagan, I would have picked two options um, two months ago. The first one would have been keep him, stay, He'll play a few games. I mean, Jesus could get injured like he did a couple of weeks ago. He'll come in. He'll play two, three games. He'll come on. He'll even come on in the Champions League. He'll start Carabao Cup games. He'll start FA Cup games. That would have been the first option. But unfortunately, Balogun did not want to stay as a backup. Uh, he wanted to be the first choice striker. And at the moment, it seems like he's not even first choice. He's not even second choice. Inket is also ahead of him. And the second option would have been, hey, you don't want to stay... Um, you can be back next season. Who knows if Nketi will still be here? Who knows this, the future? Which players will be here? Which players still won't be um, won't be here? And how many goals you'll go and score um, in your uh, other loan spell? He might be the first choice tracker next season. Or the sent him on loan to a Premier League team. A Premier League club, um, let's see him scoring the goals in the Premier League. If he ends up scoring like 15 goals in the Premier League for a while starting, then we'd have known, hey, he's performed in France, he's performed in England as well. Time to give him a chance at us. But unfortunately, that did not happen as well. And we've gone uh, uh, with the third option, uh, which is um, selling him and getting money and using it elsewhere. So uh, that one didn't work out, unfortunately. I mean, um, he's he's been scoring a lot of goals for Arsenal and 18s, under 21s, has done incredibly well. I remember watching him for the youth team when I was um, doing streams for under 21s. Two years ago, he was playing with um, Beard, not even that long ago. I think around 21, 22 season, he was playing up front with Beard and they were scoring a lot of goals for the under 21s. Uh, but um, it's coming to an end. Um, Balagan is about to leave and Monaco um, is uh, or will be his destination. Another player who's close to leaving, um, one of the um, fan favorites, crowd favorites, Kieran Tierney. It's crazy, man. Like, literally, how long ago? Um, less than two years ago, when Aubameyang was leaving, we were, we were asking who should be Arsenal captain. Like, many people are voting for Tierney. Many people are voting for Gabriel. And one year later, 
team is about to leave the club, not even being sold, is being loaned out. Um, I'm surprised not uh, many teams did not come for him. I expected, like, if Arsenal put Tien in the market, like Everton would want him, Aston Villa would want him, Newcastle would want him, Barcelona would want him, Monaco would want him, PSG, but it doesn't work out that way. It's only Newcastle who wanted him and um, Aston Villa for a bit, but both teams got other players and um, now no other Premier League team wants him. And the teams that want him from abroad, like Celtic and all those guys, they don't want to pay the money for him. They don't have uh, the money to pay for him. So we are being forced to loan him out and um, leaving the wages to a different team. And then when he comes next year, comes back next year, we will uh, we'll see if you're going to sell him or if he performs well, we could keep him. Or if he doesn't perform well or if he actually performs well and you don't want to keep him, we can get a higher fee for him. Who knows? But uh, what's the latest on Kieran Tini? According to reports um, from David Onstein last night, um, Real Sociedad close to agreement with Arsenal to sign Kieran Tini on loan. No buy option, but Arsenal get fee and plus full wages paid. If all goes to plan, left back will travel for medical over weekend. The 26 year old wanted associate dad. He'll get regular games plus the Champions League. By the way, we could end up facing him next season. Our Champions League uh, rules are different. So even if he's on loan from Arsenal, he can still play against us. If um if he ends up um getting drawn against Arsenal, he can play against us. So that would be interesting. Imagine Tierney coming to the mates and putting <laughs> putting two crosses into the box and associate dad beating us 2 0. That would be seen. That would be a nightmare um, scenario. But today we've gotten the confirmation from Fabrizio Romano who says, um, Kieran Tini to Real Sociedad, here we go. Verbal agreement in place with Arsenal on no de a loan deal, no buy option um, clause. Tierney has accepted medical being scheduled after club exchange all documents. Salary will be covered until June. So that is that for Kieran Tini for now. Again, another thing we, we have to think about, he, is not, he was not an attorney signing. Um, he was signed in the Emery um, era alongside the likes of Pepe and the likes of David Luiz. And I think by next year, we won't have any Wenger players and um, any Emery players um, still at us. Like this is now at the team with um, Gabriel, with Party, with Ramsdale, with Rhea. This is now an Ateta team. And very few players remaining from the Wenger area, uh, era, uh, Holding, El Nene, Nketia, and from the, the likes of Nelson as well and from the Emery era. Pepe is still here, Tien is still here, but now these players will be leaving. And um, yeah, we are now focusing on the Ateta, um, just the Ateta team, um, Ateta's team, and that's what he wants and that's what um, he'll get and that is what the board is willing to um, give him. Tien is a, a very good player. I remember two years ago, three years ago, he was up here in terms of first and second of uh, best left backs in the league alongside Robertson. But the kind of style of play we are playing... Um, doesn't suit him and i don't even think that's the main reason i think the injuries kind of cost him a lot like if tierney didn't get injured for the last two seasons regularly injured i think he would still have been an arsenal player you still maybe have been starting for us maybe you'd never have gone for zinchenko who knows maybe tierney would have been shown that role i would have learned that role um once again and something because he's still young remember he's still young it's not like he's 30 31 he can still learn a few um new things right now but the injury obviously we couldn't really depend on him uh, unfortunately, Zinchenko is kind of the same right now. Hopefully, he doesn't end up getting injured uh, yet again. But uh, I guess the injuries really cost Tierney. The likes of Zinchenko came in, and uh, we saw the impact that Zinchenko has for us in terms of attacking, especially. And um, for Tierney, I guess it's just a victim of um, injuries and also um, the style of play changing in terms of fullbacks. And um, yeah, the, the way the fullbacks play these days is totally different. So, Kieran Tierney, wish him all the best. Let's see if he's going to end up coming back. But I doubt you think we probably will sell him next season. All the best on in front in um, Spain. Real also said that we'll be watching him, at least that's a league that we usually watch. So I'll, I'll see how he does over there. And um, will he come back next season? Let's see. He's not the only one who's going to leave. Um, him and Balagan, we need to raise money to um, buy other players. And this is the latest on that from Sami Mokbel and Adrian Kajumba. Arsenal aim to raise 100 million in player sales before window shuts. Monaco improved um, offer for following Balogun imminent. Um, so this will not be the only players. The others, I mean, we won't get a lot of money for the likes of um, El Nene and Holding. If you sell them, we won't get a lot of money. But if we want to get um, new players, obviously Timber got injured and the suspensions these days, red cards here and there, you never know what is going to happen. You could have a scenario where you have two, three players out. We need um, backup players. And I don't think we'll get a strike, as I said, early on, but we could end up getting another defender, maybe a player on loan, a wing or something. But I think before the end of the transfer window, which is one week from now, 
we'll definitely hear of at least one more signing or two. Who knows? I would bet on one, but maybe you could get two. Um, let's hope we can get two to add to our numbers since we are getting rid of a few. Um, Tierney will leave. Elneny, Elneny could stay. I mean, Elneny and Holding could end up staying, but the others that uh, will probably leave, Pepe, Lokonga, Tavares, all those guys, I don't think they'll all stay. I think um, a good 80% of them will leave. So let's wait and see what happens with that one. But um, hopefully you can raise um, that 100 million that has been quoted and we can go and um, sign more players. Let me know what you make about that. Should Jesus start against um, Fulham tomorrow? Should he come on the off the bench or should we keep him until the Man United game? Um, Kieran Tini, what are your thoughts on this one? Surprising that he's going out on loan. Are you happy with him going out on loan? You want him back next and you would have preferred for us to sell him. Um, and also the latest on Balagan as well. What do you make of it? Thank you for watching and I'll catch up with you guys on the next